Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're doing a summary of all the financial maths for grade 10. Our financial maths is basically based around two formulas. We have simple interest which is A is equal to P1 plus I N and compound interest which is A is equal to P into 1 plus I to the power of N. Now simple interest is used in higher purchase and compound interest is used in inflation. When they give it to you in the exams, they're not going to say use the compound interest formula. They're going to say calculate the inflation and you must immediately know they are talking of compound interest or they'll say calculate the high purchase value and then you must know I'm talking of simple interest. Let's do a few basic examples. 8,000 Rand invested for four years at a simple interest rate of 12% per annum or 8,000 Rand invested for four years at a compound interest rate of 10% per annum. Now when you are doing simple interest or compound interest, the first thing you need to do is write down your P. Now we know our P is 8,000. We don't know A. If we are doing the first one, then we know that our interest is 12% and our N is 4 years. We know it's simple interest, so the formula is A is equal to P into 1 plus I N. Substitute what you have. You then can use your calculator, which will give us 11,840 Rand. Now let's calculate the compound interest. Again, you still use your pay. We fill in our information. Now be careful, it is not the same as your simple interest. The interest rate now is 10%. So we have our interest of 10% and we are also investing it for 4 years. Then you substitute into your formula. Be careful, make sure that you are using the correct formula. which gives us 11,712 Rand, 8. So which investment would be better? The best investment would be simple interest investment. Not all questions end up with simple interest. Sometimes you'll do it and you'll see that the compound interest is better depending on the interest rate and for how long they are investing. Let us look at the following example. Sally buys a TV for 18,000 Rand. She has to give a deposit of 15%. Calculate the deposit. Now, if she has 15%, she has to give 15% of the total, which means it's 15 over 100 times 18,000, which is equal to 2,700. Now that is her deposit. She has to pay back the balance. Now the balance is important because she's not going to take a loan for 18,000 Rand. Now she's going to take a loan on what specifically? 18,000 minus 2,700 which is equal to 15,300. That is what she's going to take a loan on, the balance. She agrees to pay it back at 16% per annum over three years. What is her monthly payment? So first we need to calculate how much is she going to pay back. So we start by writing down our pay. 
Now, where P is 15,300, because your P is how much you are loaning, not how much the TV cost. Our I is 16% and our N is 3 years. Which formula are we going to use? We know it's a higher purchase, which means it's a simple interest formula. We substitute what we have. Then you're going to use your calculator. And when you use your calculator, you're going to get 22,644. Now, how many months did she pay for? She took it for three years and she paid monthly. So it's three times 12, which is equal to 36. We're now going to take the entire total and we're going to divide it by 36. So we're going to say 22,644 divided by 36. This will give us our monthly payment. So our monthly payment is 629 rand. Now, usually when they have a higher purchase, there is also an insurance attached to it. Now this one says there's a monthly insurance of 23 rand 75. So it's per month that she's paying this insurance. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a total of 629 rand and we're going to add the insurance to this amount, which is 23 rand 75. So now her final payment is 652 rand and 75 cents. They tell you a loaf of bread cost 10 rand 20 at the end of 2015. How much will the bread cost at the end of 2014 if the inflation rate is 7%? Now we're going to start with our pain. When they are giving us 10 rand 20, it is what is the value of the bread right now? To calculate the number of years, we know we are in 2015. We have to get to 2040, which means we have to subtract, which gives us 25 years. So our N is 25. Our I is 7%. Once we got our pain written down and we filled in the information, we need to go to the correct formula. We know it is compound interest because it is inflation. Then you simply press it into your calculator and you'll have the cost of the bread in 25 years will be 55 rand and 36 cents. Now let's change the question slightly. Again, they are asking, how much was the bread 10 years ago? Now, if you write down your pain, this is where the trick comes in. 10 years ago was our P. Now is our A, which means they are actually giving us our A. Because remember, 10 years ago, that means we are trying to calculate what was it then. What was it 10 years ago, which is our P? Our A is what is now, but you must remember A, you are looking at it as a future. So that's how come P and A have slightly changed now. P is always the first value and A is always the final value. So when I'm talking of the past, then the P is what was and A is the present. So you're looking at a date basically on a line and the P is always the first one and A is always the second one. So when I'm saying 10 years ago, then that answer would be my P because it's the first value. And A would be my second value. My I would still be 7% and my N would be 10. Again, we're using the compound interest formula. You substitute what you have. Now, 
If you look at your algebra, 1 plus 7 over 100 to the power of 10. I'll have 10 rand 20 is equal to P 1 comma 9 6 7 1 5. Look at what I did. Even though standardly your exam paper will say round off to two decimal places. When you're doing financial maths, you don't round off at an early time. So you have to keep at least five spaces. Only at the end on your final answer do you round off. Now I'm going to divide. So the cost of bread 10 years ago was 5 rand 90. It says three people from South Africa pay $75 for a meal in America. Calculate how much it costs in rands if the exchange rate is 8 rand 40 to $1. Now the trick for exchange rate is to remember that we work with same and the same. So if I have one dollar and it's equal to eight rand forty in rands, then the amount I'm working with is seventy-five dollars. Seventy-five dollars is going to go under the one dollar. And I don't know how many rands. Then we put an equal to sign and we do cross multiplication. So I have x is equal to eight rand forty times seventy-five x is equal to 630. So the cost of the meal was 630 rand. Now let's try a different example. Gold is trading at 349.50 per gram. Calculate the value in dollars. Now we know the ratio is 1 dollar is equal to 8 rand 40. I have rands. So under R I'm going to put 349,50 and under dollar I'm going to put X. Then I'm going to make it equal and I'm going to cross multiply. So I've got 8 rand 40. X is equal to 349,50. Divide by 8 rand 40. Divide by 8 rand 40. And I have x is equal to 41,61 dollars. So the method is the same, same under same. You keep the dollars under one, you keep the rands under one. Then you're doing cross multiplication. Thank you for watching.